Park Hotel detainees, who fought alongside Novak Djokovic Novak Djokovic, said the conditions were disgusting and cruel. The plight of 32 detainees at Melbourne's infamous Park Hotel has been overshadowed this week by the detention of Serbian tennis star Novak Djokovic. Key points, detainees complained about maggots and moldy food, medical neglect and lack of hygiene. Some of the men were still boys when they were first detained. Many detainees were compassionate towards Djokovic saying, we would never wish this on anyone. The group of refugees and asylum seekers, many feeling forgotten and abandoned after up to nine years of indefinite detention watched from their windows as crowds gathered in the streets below waving Serbian flags and chanting support for the tennis great. Djokovic was sent to the Park Hotel on Wednesday night after the federal government cancelled his visa for failing to meet its entry requirement that all non-citizens be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Residents of the Carlton Detention Facility have for years complained of disgusting conditions, including maggots and moldy food, medical neglect, mistreatment and lack of hygiene. Catch up on the main COVID-19 news from January 10 with a look back at our blog The Park Hotel facility has been labeled a cruel, a coffin, an aquarium, a torture center, and in October it earned the nickname Outbreak Hotel after COVID-19 swept through the facility. Base to play or pause, M to mute, left and right arrows to seek, up and down arrows for volume. Watch duration. 5 minutes, 12 seconds, 5M7.30. Fears inside a Melbourne detention hotel as COVID cases grow. Activists say the windows were shaded and sealed, the carpets are dirty, rubbish is infrequently removed and the place is full of bugs and an unpleasant smell. There are no outdoor facilities and several fires broke out in recent months leaving two floors damaged, detainees said. Loading a spokesperson from the Australian Border Force told the ABC that all immigration detainees were given appropriate food, activities, internet access and clean accommodation. Management of detainees, whether in an immigration detention center or APOD, is carried out with primary consideration given to the safety and security of all individuals, staff, and the public. The spokesperson said, ironically, those detained, who largely stem from war-torn countries including Afghanistan and Myanmar, now find themselves locked away with an international sports star. The Park Hotel in Melbourne. Djokovic's legal challenge against deportation was adjourned until Monday. If he loses, the world great will lose his place in the Australian Open, but he can safely return to his home country. Jamal Mohamed, detained since 2013, urged Djokovic to use his high-profile position to advocate for our freedom. Now the world can see how we are treated but still the world is silent on our treatment, Mr. Mohammed said. A rich man alongside some of the most trapped people Jane Salmon, who has been a refugee advocate for nine years, said some of the men were just boys when they arrived. They spent their teenage years and now much of their adulthood locked away by the Australian government without being accused of a crime. Detainees supplied photos of moldy bread and maggot-infested chicken they say was served to them at the Park Hotel. Ms. Salmon said, after nine years of banging the drum, Djokovic's arrival is in many ways a gift, in that it has drawn attention to the plight of these men. Hey race one of the richest guys in the world next to some of the most trapped people, she told the ABC. It's reached a whole new community, and, you know, a lot of the Serbian protesters outside had no idea that there were people holed up in there. Ms. Salmon said the arrival of Djokovic was a welcome relief from a mundane life locked away. Many detainees expressed compassion for the sportsmen because they would never wish this on anyone. Others felt their plight continued to be overlooked while the world rallied behind a tennis star. It's depressing because this person has been here for two days and a lot of people are protesting for him and especially media are raising their voice, Zahid Hussein told the ABC. We have had nine years detention. We are also human. We also have a family. We also have a life and a lot of dream. Transferred for medical treatment that never came Mr. Hussein, 33 was transferred to the facility from Manus Island for medical treatment in 2019, but he said he has still not received that treatment. Mr. Hussein had reseeding and bleeding gums which creates extreme ongoing pain. I can't bite or chew any food, it's very painful, he told the ABC, adding that even sleeping is difficult due to the pain and bleeding. Mr. Hussein was transferred from Manus Island for medical treatment in 2019, but he said he has still not received any. Although he was sent here to have his condition treated, he says he has received nothing more than mouthwash and painkillers. Mr. Hussein described an endless circle which started with him being told he must pay for the treatment himself, 
despite the fact he is detained with no means of earning money after activists raised cash to pay for a dentist. He said he was informed he would also need to pay for guards and a car to take him there. When the money for this was raised, he said he was still refused access to treatment. They are just playing games with my health, with my life, he said. Carolyn Graydon, principal solicitor for the Asylum Seeker Resource Center, said this is not an isolated case. She said for many of her own clients, health needs and in particular dental services were often neglected or inadequate. At the Park Hotel, Ms. Graydon described inhumane conditions, a complete lack of hygiene, and a lack of adherence to proper risk management processes. 32 refugees and asylum seekers are detained at the Park Hotel. I think that the despicable treatment of these men indicates that their lives have been given very little value, she told the ABC. The problem is we don't have any human rights protection or any minimum standards of immigration detention that's enshrined in Australian law by which we can use legal means to have these men released. And unlike prisons that house convicted criminals, there is no statutory framework for minimum conditions for people in immigration detention. Under Australian law, Anyone who arrives by boat to seek asylum must be detained and there is no limit on how long that detention can last. Refugees on Melbourne's lockdown for those who have fled their homes seeking safety, going through Melbourne's harsh COVID-19 lockdown triggers memories from difficult years in detention. Read more The government has said the detention policy is designed to deter people smuggling and drowning at sea but refugee advocates stress it is not illegal to seek asylum. These men should be immediately released, Ms. Graydon said, adding that all went through a security vetting process before they were brought on shore. None of them present a risk to the Australian community. Most of them have been found to be refugees. There's absolutely no basis upon which they should have been detained at all. Ms. Gary Don said it's hard to know if the recent focus on Djokovic will aid the other detainees. It's very depressing and disappointing that it has taken a high-profile sports star's predicament to highlight the completely outrageous an unacceptable treatment of these men for 10 years, she said, but it's still good that there is a cause for highlighting the incredibly unjust and inhumane approach that the government has taken to these men and got away with so far despite so much international criticism. We are all human beings Mustafa Azimidabar was detained by the Australian government since he fled Iran in 2013. Kurdish activist Mustafa Azimidabar described his time at the Park Hotel as a life of e-torture, inequality. Lots of bullying, lots of blaming us, hurting us. With his life under threat in Iran, Mr. Azimidabar fled in 2013. He boarded an overcrowded boat bound for Australia with dreams of building a new peaceful life. Mr. Azimidabar is a painter and musician. Instead, Mr. Azimidabar spent the next eight years locked up in detention centers, most recently the Park Hotel. For eight years, his life was stagnant. He was kept largely isolated with little light, daily checks and pat-downs and nothing to occupy his time or thought. Even someone like Nelson Mandela during the apartheid was allowed to study in jail. But in 2021 in Australia detainees are not allowed to study, Mr. Azimidabar. Last year, Mr. Azimidabar was released, but he said part of him remains locked in the Park Hotel with his friends. I could be there and they could be free, you know. It's random, he said. It's like the government looks at us as numbers. He said in labeling refugees as terrorists and a threat for society, the government is targeting our dignity. But the truth is that we are all human beings. During his detention, he said it was activists outside the hotel walls that kept him strong. Mr. Azimidabar said support from the Australian community kept him strong. The other part of the suffering, of the sadness, is the good of people in Australia, the beauty of the society, he said. When I looked at them from the window, I got their sense of positivity to continue, and I never gave up. But this week, the streets have been filled with crowds focused solely on Djokovic. Supporters protested outside the hotel where Djokovic is being detained. It's good that Djokovic is taking the case to court within three days. It's really good, Mr. Azimidabar said. But for refugees, if they want to take the case to court, it takes years and years. Even though Mr. Azimidabar is now free, his life remains in limbo. He has only been given a string of temporary visas which do not allow him to study. Mr. Azimidabar with Australian artist Ben Quilty. But his first priority remains the freedom of his friends still detained at the Park Hotel. When the tennis player, Djokovic, leaves the country, after that, I hope media don't forget about the situation of the refugees, he said. Keep talking about the situation so that all of them get free like me.